Hey, how you going? It's um, Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with Crank.com and with that metal station. And today I'm having a chat with Tom and Harry of Outsider, Adelaide hardcore metal band who recently released their Coward single on the 21st of January. Been ripping it up for a, a while in the local scene since around 2018. Cheers, guys, for joining me. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Uh, absolute pleasure, man. How are you coping with the fucking heat, man? I've said this about five times the time. It's just cooking, man. I'm not far away in the Riverland here. It's cooking. No, no AC works as soon as it gets over 30 degrees. So it's just, I'm struggling. I'm not going to lie. How about you? I've been sitting in an air-conditioned office all day, so I've been okay. As soon as I stepped out, though, it hit me. And I was like, oh, this is what everyone's been complaining <laughs> about. Yeah, yeah. And then over in America, they're having, like, one of the biggest cold spells in a fucking long while. Because I've got a few American friends I've been talking to them with a, that metal station. US people yep. have been telling me it's cold as hell and been sending me pictures of the snow and everything. I'd, I'd much prefer being the snow. I'd much <laughs> prefer the cold than the hot. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. rub me up. <laughs> so, <laughs> Outsider, man, can you um, briefly tell me a little bit about how um, Outsider first started and the sound? Would you like to take this away? Oh, well, you, were, you were in it before I was. So, <laughs> um, so Outsider began. Um, under the name of a different band, um, sort of. It, it started between Tristan, who plays guitar in 2319, and me. Uh, we just met through Nathan from 23, um, and then basically just going to shows, met Joel, our original bassist, um, and had another guy on drums at the start, and uh, and he just yeah didn't work out. Unfortunately, as bands do when they're starting to do whatever they do. Um, and then through another friend, Kyle, who is the guitarist at Bagger Panther, I messaged him and says, hey, mate, do you want to play drums for, for my band? And he goes, nah, but hit up my drummer, Harry. In comes Harry. Um, in comes name change and demos. And then that's kind of it. And then we did the demo and, yeah, that was kind of it. It was all all the guitars were written, well, all the songs really were written by Tristan to begin with. Um, so it was very much his sound. And stuff like that, and then um, and then that moved into Joel and Jake um, as Jake joined the band when we released Ache, our first actual single, um, and so that became um, their sort of sound with Blood um, as Tristan moved into Twenty Three full time and stuff like that, and then um, and then yeah, now Coward, this version of Outsider with Cohen on bass, Jake on guitar, and then yeah, Harry and I. Yeah, so it's about um. That's so around 2019, that single eight dropped. Is it about then that you've gone, okay, then let's start kind of getting serious about this. We've got our lineup kind of set and kind of ready to go. More so, yeah, that's when we started to really hone in on that sound. Um, it obviously changed our sound a whole heap since yeah. that two track. Um, and I mean, I think we've all kind of gotten a bit tighter and a bit better as musicians um since since that two track as well so um yeah really trying to hone in on that new sound um since then um that's really kind of when it took off yeah and we went we chased down sam from dreg as well he was doing what tour was it they dreg were touring and they probably with reaction was it really reactions tour yeah. and um no was it the d's nuts tour I can't remember. Well, anyway, short story. They stayed at Joel's house and Sam said to um, Joel, hey, if you ever need production or anything like that or recording, hit me up, come to Melbourne, let's do it. And then so that's what we did for Ache and Blood. And then we sent the stuff to him for mixing and producing and stuff like that with Coward. But yeah, we added his ears into the mix as well after the demo to kind of go, hey, let's add another element as well that we might not have thought of. Yeah, what's work like working with him? Because Dreg, that's another great band. If you listen to this and you're going, who the fuck are Dreg? Go check them out. They're an awesome band, eh? 100%. Yeah, uh, massively go check out Dreg. Um, Definitely. It was sick. It's, it's really cool. It's funny, like, because it's, it's always, when we were dealing with him, it was in his house. So there was a couple of guys from Dreg living in the same house and stuff like that. So it was kind of cool to be around that whole atmosphere and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, he just... He just brings that different element and, you know, different sort of electronic guitars and effects and all that sort of stuff that we pitch to him and we go, hey, we like this sound, we like this sound, we like this sound. He goes, hey, this is my sound and then kind of just throws it in and goes, hey, what do you think of this? And we usually go, yep, nailed it, done, 
So yeah, no, it's, it's sick. We really like working with Sam, and he's always been really good to us. Yeah, he um, he he's got that kind of heavier side that he likes to write and and kind of produce and stuff like that that doesn't really fit in with Drake. So that's where we kind of step in and go, yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll hone on on that. So um, yeah, he's helped us a fair bit with it. Yeah, and the hardcore scene in Australia, I'm extremely proud of the bands we have in Australia. You mentioned a few bands like 2319 and that as well. We have some amazing hardcore bands like yourselves that are just repping it to the scene. It must be cool for you guys to be a part of the hardcore scene in Australia as well. I don't know if it's just me seeing all these hardcore bands, but I love the hardcore scene, man, especially the Australian scene. It's good to see bands like yourself just fucking flying the flag high for Australia as well for the hardcore scene. Yeah, it's pretty sick, honestly. Like, we've been, we got pushed straight into a pretty cool little friendship sort of circle with a bunch of people in the Adelaide scene who then had friends in the Sydney scene and the Melbourne scene and stuff like that. So we kind of got exposed to a bunch of really cool people really quickly and have sort of tried to stay friends with them because they're sick musicians and stuff like that. So, yeah, we we were really lucky when we started sort of just getting drop straight into that like you say yeah the heavy scene and stuff like that so I don't know, what are your thoughts yeah I mean, sick. it's like it's 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 the i feel like there's always been a scene there but i feel like it's really flourished within the last couple of years as well there's a lot of a lot of younger generation kind of talented people coming through um as well as like people who have been in bands when they were a bit younger like early 20s who are a bit older now just coming back into it um, and, and starting bands and it's, yeah, it's, it's really, really, really exciting to see all across Australia. It is. And the Adelaide scene, so I'm really tight. I know it's, we're only just starting to get back to shows, but pre, before all this crap happened, like the scene was really tight. I know for myself, I started doing this and going up to shows. I didn't know anyone. Now I go into shows and everyone's like, hey, they're going, what's happening? And they all kind of get together. And I think, I can't even remember, I think it was, um, Chris from um, Hidden Intent was saying that even if some dudes don't even like each other necessarily, they still get along and support the bands and the scene and the stuff in Adelaide as well. Yeah. I think COVID's helped that massively as well in the last year, to be honest. Like, it sucked for music and shows and all that sort of stuff, but actually supporting each other who's putting music out and sharing their content and, you know, giving them reviews or actually giving them a listen because there's not a heap of music that really went out last year. Yeah. everyone's really repping each other so it's really cool like even sue's um from recurrent verse and stuff like that she goes to every show and i had a massive chat to her the other day and she said the same thing it's, it's sick because everyone's kind of just sending her um information and, and new songs and stuff like that and it's actually really sick because everyone's supporting each other in you know the groups on facebook and stuff like that as well which is really cool to see yeah, and it gives people like um, me and Suze, I know she goes on about it too. We, um, a lot of us do, and they have support. You know, you mentioned that keyword support that I like to mention a lot as well. Support people, like not only just fucking going, okay, and like and subscribe on Spotify, but going out and actually buying the single, like the new one for Coward, buying some merch and things like that because yeah. you can't go to these shows and you can't go, you know, and that's usually where you're getting your merch and things like that. So supporting bands, it's more so now important to support bands through the scene as we're coming up and things are starting to go again. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so can, can I ask, how, how do you approach um, the songwriting for Outsider? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll take that one. We'll go lyrically yeah. and musically if you want. Yep. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, musically, um, what well, we've been always dependent on kind of one person for the whole kind of process, um, but that person's kind of changed over the years. Um, it was initially Tristan; he would just write the whole thing, and then I uh, like I would come in and fix the drums up where I needed to. Um, and add my own little flair on things, um, and then and then we'd hand it over to Tom for for, for vocals and, and lyrically, um, and then it kind of moved to Joel, um, our old bassist. He he was writing for a bit, and then same I would come in and do the drums, and then it would go to Tom, um, and then now it was it's it's gone to Jake. He's done the bulk of it, um, gone to me for drums, and then, <laughs> and then, and then to Tom. Um, <laughs> But that's got to be good for for you as well to go. Okay, we don't need to rely on just one person for the songwriting. We can and the, the musical side of things as well. We can 
mix it up and we all kind of lean on each other and take different ideas in as well going forward. That must be cool too. Yeah, correct. I mean, a blood and coward have all been kind of written collectively, but like solely by one person mainly. And that person's changed, but we've still kind of kept that same sound, which has been really cool. I think we've yeah. always kind of had that ability to stay collaborative um we've wanted we've had a direction that we wanted to go yeah and it's always it's kept going in that direction every time still it's i don't know it hasn't felt like it's been stagnant we've been like hey this is where we want to go and whoever like guitarist or bassist that's writing the song at the time has like i don't know embraced that and gone yep sweet this is how i like to write and things like that um and then gone in the direction still within i don't know the image and sound that we want to do yeah yeah for sure um Lyrically, um, I write every lyric except for the last verse of Eight and Blood, which Harry wrote, um, I'm pretty sure. And then uh, there's a couple of lines. If I'm really struggling with something, I'll kind of step out of the closet that I scream in when we tracked Coward and go, Harry, give me something that sounds really tough and, um, and then we'll do something like that. So it's good. Like we just bounce ideas off each other or I'll do – a line or send lyrics and go hey does this sound aggressive enough or does this sound melodic enough or anything like that just in the lyrics and then go in and do vocal placements and Colin's been really good for that since he's come into the band when doing all the coward stuff going hey why don't you do high vocals here or why don't you layer this here or why don't you do this verse again and instead of going start to end lyrics like the other two songs have been why don't you repeat something and he's challenged my thought process in that, which has been really good as well. So again, bouncing back to sort of being collaborative as well and bouncing off of each other. He's come with a really good fresh set of ears and been able to go, Hey, even though I'm the new guy, I'm fine with saying my opinion. Why don't you give this a crack? And worst case scenario, we just control, uh, control Z and, you know, undo it and start again. Yeah. And that, that, that's like I just said before, it's important for you all to kind of get in there as well. And Colin laying down ideas and he's all kind of flowing yep. off that. Cause you know, Colin could have this great idea for this next track. And he's like, boom, let's go. Uh, can you tell me a little bit yeah. about the recording for this track? Um, um, record. So, yeah. We, we planned on going over with Sam again um, to Melbourne, but then COVID obviously COVID, stopped yeah. that. So we turned to Jake um Jake studied at SAE and stuff like that and did um, all recording and mixing and, and all that sort of stuff. So we said, all right, mate, instead of going to um, somewhere to record in Adelaide and pay someone and this and that, why don't you just embrace it and go for it and we'll do it at your place because um, yeah. he has everything there ready to go. Um, so that's what we did. We sort of set, sat down and went, all right, one of us is going to have to act as Sam kind of going, nah, you need to do that take better and nah, that you need to do this better. And not take it personally. Um, and then, yeah, we set up a little vocal booth in, in the cupboard and stuff like that, which was pretty fun. And it gave us the ability to kind of, we did the song and then three days later, we were just listening to the demo before we sent it off to Sam. And I was like, nah, I hate the lyrics. I, I went back a week later and rechecked half the vocals or something like that, or the lyrics that I did, and then sent them to Sam. And then we went backwards and forwards a little bit going, hey, this needs to be a bit tighter. This needs to be that. And so then he mixed it all together and, and did all of his magic so yeah it was cool to be able to do it in-house and be what really happy with how it all sounds really yeah i mean we kind of challenged ourselves a fair <coughs> bit and uh, there's a lot of constructive criticism going around but um which is a bit testing at times but for the most part i, I think it was really <laughs> i think it was really good though like you know usually we'd, we'd be there with sam and sam would go not nah, do it again but for us to be like no nah, that needs to be better i mean it really it was, it was challenging at times, but definitely uh, we're all grateful for it. Yeah, um, I think it's brought us better together in the long run, being able to only bounce off of each other instead of someone else going, do this better, like going to Sam, you know, I'd fall asleep for half a day or something like that when Harry was going through the drums, where now we were all sitting there around the computer as he was doing them going, hey, let's do this or why don't you try this? And, and the same with guitars and bass and vocals, like everyone had full attention, which was really cool. And, and input, you know, and um, with Sam not being there to put on his producer hat and give that constructive criticism would, would have also given you all a chance to be able to take constructive criticism from you all as well because the band's family and friends as well when you got your mate going, oi, 
Oi, mate, fucking make that a bit tighter, buddy. You're like, oi, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? But to be able to learn to take that from your, your fellow bandmates, that constructive criticism and go, okay, that's not personal. We're only doing this for the sound and for the band to push it better. And when we get out of here, yeah. we're done. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everything goes back to normal. As soon as we leave that room, there's no hard feelings because it's for the, the better of the song situation. Yeah. It's not a, it's never a personal attack. Yeah. It's mainly yeah. just me telling the <laughs> lyrics need to be scarier. <laughs> <laughs> Make it scarier. Yeah, and they did. That's how dope as do on this um, track too, Cow. Can you tell me a little bit about the film clip for this one as well? Um, that the, the idea, there was a couple of ideas that bounced around for a concept that we were going to do. And then we went away from it. We're going to store all those ideas. But then it kind of just went to similar sort of from the lyrical content. We didn't get to do a video for Blood. So we wanted to make that hard impact of going, hey, I want you to feel what I'm screaming about. You, I want you to feel how angry we are in the sound and things like that. So that's where the whole fisheye closeness came. Um, when so i did the album artwork um which ended up being the green sort of smoke and, and things like that so when i sent that to caleb um vitality visuals who we did the video with he went all right cool let's do green room smoke lights strobes all that sort of stuff to bring more of the whole concept so keep everything green and really tied in as a package which is what we wanted to do anyway um so yeah, we just bounced a couple of ideas off of Caleb. Uh, we're lucky that Harry's dad has a warehouse that we're able to convert for our videos and stuff like that. So we set dressed that um, ourselves and did it all in house and got Caleb in and then yeah, ran some footage of Harry playing the drums through my computer with layered like um, titles over it back through an old TV I had just to kind of add something a bit different. So it's not just band shot constantly and it gave it a bit of a bit of a different feel and a glitchiness and stuff like that. So. Yeah, it was kind of just, here's how I want you to feel when listening to the lyrics and seeing it and stuff like that, I guess. Yeah, and it came yeah, out. That. Yeah, um, yeah oh, oh, all of that is a 30 degrees. It was a 30 degree, <laughs> 30 degrees yeah, in a fucking like, warehouse. <laughs> all the lights, it was like being in like Cairns or like Southeast Asia. It was sweltering in the yeah, sorry, sweatshop. Hot. Literally, it was filthy. And then we, we all packed up and it was two o'clock and we were driving home and I got around the corner and I just went, fuck, I forgot one clip. So I made Caleb come back four days later and I set everything up with him, set the TV up all for a five second little clip that we barely used. Like, it, we needed it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad we got it. Um, but yeah, I remember messaging him at two in the morning being like, you're never going to believe what I've done. I forgot one, one job. Yeah, he would have been like, fuck, but you got to make that executive decision. It's like, bugger it, we're done. We'll come back and we'll do this five minutes later. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Playing like live. A good friend. Yeah, he's got um, playing live, man. We're going to chat about that. We're chatting about Heavy SA off camera. That's coming up on April 17th at the Lion Arts Factories. I have been there a number of years. Great, great show. Um, yeah, do you want to tell us a little bit about that show? We've um, we've never played a Heavy SA and... and I don't know about you. I personally haven't been, I haven't one, been to one, either. but we've heard really, really good things. So when the, sh when the opportunity came up to play it at the end of 2019, I think was yeah. when we organized that. Yeah. It was kind of like, yeah, let's jump on it. Let's, let's hit a different crowd to what we usually see and stuff like that. And kind of go out and go, Hey, this is us. This is what we do. This is our sound. Um, you know, we're not super, super metal. We kind of sway more towards hardcore and stuff like that, I guess. Um, but you know, you're either going to like it or you're not. And so see what it's, see what it's like. So now we're pretty hyped to play that. Um, hopefully COVID sort of relaxes and caps and stuff like that can increase. So it can be a full house and, and no changes to what it's supposed to be. Cause, um, yes, yeah, when I was talking to Susie the other day, she said that people are lining up down the street to get in. Everyone rocks up straight away. Yeah. So even if you know, we're opening or I think we're on, we're on pretty early from what the lineup was, she's like, the room will be packed. No question. Oh, heavy like, SA is going, great. Don't stress. I've been to Heavy, Heavy SA a number of years, and I love that show. <laughs> it's actually one of the shows that really um, re, um, ignited my passion for heavy metal. Like, I've been doing what I was doing. I'm dad, I'm 40, but I just got stuck in the same monotony of life. And when I went along to one of these Heavy SA shows a number of years ago, I think it was about five years ago now, I, it just blew me away. I said, from this moment on, I'm going to just fucking cover this shit. I got asked to do a guest review for Crank, I think, for the following year or for later in that year for new dead 
Metal Fest with Naughty puts yep. Naughty puts on as well. But I was like, yep. this is the quality of talent we have here in our backyard. I was like, we need people need to get amongst it. You know, it's it's a showcase of what we have in South Australia. But it's also, I believe, like a little microcosm of what we got going on in Australia because you. The, the talent we have in each state is amazing. Not you know, not just here in South Australia, but those heavy SAs are just great shows, and the people need to get along them and support them and see guys like yourself. Because from the first band to the last, Northy does put in the effort, and all those guys are A grade musicians like yourselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, if we can bring some hardcore fans in to see more of the metal music and stuff like that, and then if we can get some fans from that scene as well and start even crossing even more of the little sub scenes in yeah. SA and stuff like that. That's kind of what it's all about and growing a bigger scene because it's, it's what it's about. Like we said before, supporting each other and stuff. I, so yeah. I love hardcore music, man. I've loved hardcore music since way back when I heard uh, Sick of It All and bands like oh. that, you know, I've just been, and I'm a metalhead too, but hardcore music, I, I can't, you know, any of this metal elitism bullshit. I had a big rant about it the other day as well. I can't, I got on the other day and I've seen someone post some crap about Oh, can we just agree that um metalcore isn't metal? It's like oh, fuck you, mate. All I care is <laughs> the only band we can agree that isn't metal is track. Fuck track. Everyone else is cool. I don't even give a fuck shit if you're playing Ghost. As long as you're cranking some metal, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't care, dude. I can't handle any of that metal leaders and crap. I exactly. Uh, I mean, I when I when I say we're hardcore, I say we're hardcore because we play two step and we play breakdowns. So it's yeah. it's simple. It's done. But yeah. yeah, we'll get put in the metalcore scene. We'll get put in the metal scene. We got we got called new metal because of the new song, and I was like, we're not new yeah, metal. No, yeah. It's like, hardcore. It's cool. We're not new metal. Like I will just we'll keep it simple. We're not old school hardcore, like punk hardcore, but we're still hardcore. Yeah, hardcore. Yeah, definitely hardcore, man. Um, what's next for you guys? Is able to say much about what you've got planned? Like no doubt you've sort of done a bit of work in 2020. What's your next step after Heavy SA? Um, yeah, we, we, we've been riding non-stop. Um, I mean, that's all we can really do in COVID. Yeah. So we've got a couple of demos bouncing around um, that we're yeah, still trying to finalise and whatnot. So we want to get recording pretty soon, but there's nothing set in stone yet, unfortunately. Um, we're still kind of riding that, that coward wave, but we, we definitely want to get something organised real soon. That, so as soon as that starts to die off, we can just go straight into, into another... Yeah, I don't know what the release will be if it's a single or a two track or even even an EP. I don't think we'd do an EP off the bat off uh, off the back of this, but um, yeah. yeah, I mean, content content starting to get there. Um, yeah. We just got to finalise it. That's all. Yeah, we've got a couple of shows in the works as well. Um, we locked in two shows the other day, um, which yeah, hopefully everything stays stays good with COVID and stuff like that because that'll be exciting to announce and yeah gonna pull that hole can't announce it yet so yeah. Uh, but, but yeah watch this space yeah exactly watch this um uh, we're supposed to be going to ballarat this weekend to play with anticline but unfortunately because uh, of the restrictions in melbourne we had to pull out of that um so yeah hopefully that show still goes ahead for them and they can get a, a replacement happening and all that sort of stuff because yeah we love those boys we played our first show with them so yeah. it the sucks ballarat. that we couldn't get over there down yeah, Ballarat. exactly. Bands out of there. I just had a chat with um, Nick from Nicholas Cage Fighter out of there. Um, there yep, um, cast true. out yep. EP was pretty dope as well, man. Yeah, uh, cool, man. Sorry, I'm gonna that... let you. I might let you guys get out of here though. It looks bloody hot. I'm cooking. You're cooking, man. We're gonna do. <laughs> we'll do last words. Um, shout out or any thank yous you want to add in or anything I may have forgotten you want to add in the end there, man. For both of you guys, Harry and Tom. Um... We'll start with shout out, Sam. Shout out Sam from Drag. Yeah, definitely. 100% number one. Um, who else we got? <laughs> <laughs> shout out Sam. Um, I'm going to shout out my partner because she deals with my she psychoticness. <laughs> I'll stay up till one in the morning thinking of video ideas and merch and the cover art. And I run everything past her before I send it to the boys going, hey, what do we think about this? She goes, I don't care. <laughs> but she does care because she's supportive, but she goes, look, like, it's good. Like, just just stop tw- tweaking it and stuff. So, no, nah, she's she's massive. The, the, the band mum. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> uh, no, we definitely got to shout out Stephen Cook as well. He's he's actually our biggest fan. and uh, That is true. Number one. Uh, Adelaide photographer. So, we're always trying to, like, going back to what we were saying before about supporting 
the artists in in, in Adelaide. I mean, the photography, same as music, is massive. Is a massive part of it. So um, we got a lot of respect for him as well. He does a lot of work for us. So yeah, shout out Caleb, Caleb Rose, Vitality Visuals. Um, really, really good friends with him. He did the Aga Panther stuff as well. Harry and Colin's other band. Um, if you're into more of the what do you call it, alt, oh, I don't even pop, know what it is. Yeah, yeah. new <laughs> wave off, stuff. Off. Um, so yeah, out, massive shout out to him. Um, who else are we going to shout out? I didn't prepare a shout out. Nah, me shout out to Aga Panther. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> um, shout out to, shout out to Collision Course. Yeah, true. Actually. Um, yeah. 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 And Tim, Tim's been hitting our emails nonstop for the last three years going, all right, let's work together, let's work together, let's yeah, work well, together. Yeah, Tim and Ophelia are doing some great work. Um, Collision Course are doing some great work for the Australian scene. They've um, turned 100%. me on to a number of bands, a number of bands, Tim and Ophelia, which is – it's great having people like that in the scene, pushing the scene and getting word out and just being excited about Australian music. Yeah, definitely. Shout out Anticline. Shout out Starv. <laughs> shout out – uh, Josh at Lost Soul Bookings. Um, who else are we going to shout out? Shout out. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah. Shout out Signals. <laughs> shout out Signals, new Adelaide band. Um, shout out all our, uh, yeah, all our friends that support us. Yeah. Josh, shout out Josh Reed. Josh Reed. Josh Reed, number one. Um, yeah. I think, this is good. This is good going forever. <laughs> yeah, shout, shout out anyone who's come to a show and bought our merch. And listened. Yeah, I think there's, there's going to be someone that we've forgotten. There's going to be someone really important that we've forgotten. So apologies in advance. I'm sorry. Sorry Shout to that, that person. Got that one time. Yeah. When, where was that? <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, shout out. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> shout out to that guy as well. <laughs> uh, shout, shout out to everyone that's going to go grab this coward single, put it in their stereo, and turn it up really fucking loud for the neighbors. Shout out to you as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. We get a lot of respect for anyone who wants to listen to our shit. So that's awesome. And come say hi. If you're at a show, don't be scared. Come say hi. We'll always say hi. Absolutely. Um, Do so it. yeah, don't be. A- heavy SA. Uh, April 17th, Lion Arts Factory, it is sold out. So if you didn't get a ticket last year, you missed out. And too bad you don't miss out next to fucking you. It's <laughs> going to be a great show. I've been to a number of them. It's an absolute rip of a show. You guys will love it. Cheers for making some time to have a chat with myself, Crank, and that metal station. Thank you for having us. You're Cheers, legend, man. Thank you very Cheers, much. Guys.